Jim Trafficant tonight is the speaker that's coming in. Um, he's giving several speeches on the bankruptcy of the United States. And he wants to end the political dominance of the government by the Federal Reserve Bank. He has courageously and consistently taken a stand for the U.S. taxpayer by working to limit the government frivolous spending. These habits and principles that we need to end in the Federal Reserve and what Jim Trafficking is speaking about is at the heart of what we are trying to do at the Citizens Reform Center. Jim, I'd like to give a warm welcome. Saying, I brought a little something for the host here, for uh, Mickey and his wife Arlene. Mickey, would you come up? I want to present this to you. You know, when I was away at art school, <laughs> I did uh, I did horses and women, <laughs> and I just couldn't bring one of the women here. So. <laughs> This is Shadow Dancer from me to you and your Thank wife. You very, very God bless you. Thank you for hosting this. Thank you. Good job. You're doing a lot of people. Where are you putting all this stuff? I'm going to keep an eye on this, guys. You got a front pocket there. That'll work. Don't worry about nothing. Worst comes the worst panic. <laughs> Man, I left last night, 8 o'clock, out of Youngstown. I got here about 4.15, 4.30, looking for a mechanic's bird. And Mick, I want you to take this phone. There's a fellow from American Free Press that may call lost. I'm sure he will be. Just answer it if he calls and give him directions. The name is Pete. All right. Now, having said that, I traveled all night. I was Thursday night doing a radio program all night to help a worthy cause in Cleveland, Ohio, where they're trying to raise money to fight cancer. I don't really want to get into that issue. I think we've had all this money all these years go towards cancer, and they keep talking about prevention. I think at some point there are going to be some kind of cures with all the money we're spending. But anyway, hello to the Paletta family, to the matriarch, Mrs. P, to Aunt Kathleen, to everybody here. Thank you for welcoming me. I've had a, an unusual <coughs> ordeal, to say the least. I'm probably the only member of Congress to be officially targeted by both parties. <laughs> <laughs> I disagreed so much. Don't mind me, my eye had some surgery. But disagreed so much with what was going on that I made very <coughs> serious enemies. Very serious enemies. I think very few people know my, my history, but when I originally ran for Congress, I had just come off the first trial, having been the only American in history to ever defeat the Justice Department in a RICO trial, pro se, with a full jury verdict. I can, remember, I can remember the attorney saying, I'll never get this long as I live, Jim. We, we've got to challenge your Miranda rights. I said to the attorney, I'm going to challenge your Miranda rights. you got a fake confession on me. That sounds unbelievable, doesn't it? Yes. He said, Jim, you're under duress. <coughs> we only have one choice, and that's go after you. I said, you're fired. I said, you're fired. The judge couldn't believe it. She, uh, she made me come into court with the attorney in open court. I was talking with Hague and the guys today, and she made me fire him on the record. And all the press, and no jury seated yet, 
was up in the jury box just laughing. And she said, you know, Mr. Trafficking, some people just might think you're a little crazy. I said, quite to the contrary. I said, I've been probated, and I've been determined to be sane. But it was a dynamic trial. It lasted almost two months. And did I make enemies in that trial? But I beat him. And I had a target on my back ever since. But I think what really happens, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the case of John Demony, the Cleveland auto worker. I was a congressman that ultimately took the case. And it was my evidence that had him released in Israel, where he was in solitary confinement, scheduled to be executed, already convicted. And I think I'm going to start with that because, first of all, what many of you do here is priceless. You help Americans protect their homes and their property. And property was so important that the last amendment officially to the Declaration and the drafting of the Declaration of Independence was finally changed at the last minute from life, liberty, and pursuit of property to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's how important property was. So by God, I commend you. God bless you for what you do and keep it up. Going back, I think, when I got involved in that case, it sealed my future politically and I was going to go to prison. My staff told me, do not talk with these people. Don't talk with them, Jim. And I heard the son outside, and he was saying to my staff, they said, well, Jim's not here, he's over on the house floor. They said, well, we'll wait for him, okay? He said, well, he might be a long time, and I'm listening. And the boy says, listen, we didn't want to go to Jim. We know the government hates him. But we've been to every member of Congress, every senator. They won't even talk with us. So we didn't break any law. I never had a speeding ticket. My father's not asking to meet with any of these people. What, what's going on here, he said. I can't even talk with an elected official. This is America. Never forget it. I said to my assistant, I said, bring him in. Don't bring him in. There was a son and the son-in-law. Do not do this, Jim. You're already against foreign aid. They've got you targeted. Do not talk with them. And the decision I made is a decision that I am proud of. I said, you send that son in here. He come in, he sat down. He said, thank you so much. You only wanted to meet with us. The newspapers never printed this. I said, look, if your father's responsible for the mass extermination of hundreds of thousands of innocent people, I can go over there and pull the switch. But I heard your conversation, and I believe you should have the right to talk to somebody in government. And I know I'm the last one I heard you. And you're only here because no one else will talk to you. But you tell me your situation. I want to look into it. Well, they gave me some information, and lo and behold, the newspapers come out and said headlines. Trafficking supports Nazi mass murderer Ivan the Terrible. How's that for some political publicity? <laughs> and I, excuse me, I decided that from some of the things they said to me, there was something very wrong. So I immediately initiated an investigation of my own. 